Kimberly Kalen for the defense. May I proceed? Kalen, correct me because I've been saying <laughs> your name wrong. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Please introduce yourself to the court. My name is Emil Midori. What do you do for a living, Ms. Midori? I'm a tour guide for the Midlands Museum of Popcorn. It's a pretty tiring job, but you know, I try to leave some extra time for some volunteer activities. So how are you involved in today's case? I was the polling place manager for District 12 during the 2015 mayoral election. Have you ever been polling place manager before? I sure have. I'm proud to say that I was polling place manager since 2006. What does your job as polling place manager entail? Basically, it's to make sure that everyone who's legally able to and willing to vote gets a chance to do so. It's a very important job and I take it extremely seriously. It also, I have to, you know, deal with any unexpected issues that may <coughs> arise and I need to make sure everything and everyone is where they're supposed to be on the day of the election. Ms. Midori, on what date was the 2015 mayoral election held? March 17th, 2015. You know, some folks celebrate St. Patrick's Day, but this year I was celebrating democracy. So what was it like in the months leading up to March 17th? Oh, you know, uh, it was. I understand that not everybody can get as excited about elections as I do, but I was pretty proud this year to see the folks of Truman getting very uh, passionate about the democratic process. Based on what you saw in the district, why was there excitement about the election? Well, Dr. Elizabeth Ginger was this young whippersnapper full of ambition, and it was really encouraging to see the folks of District 12 in particular getting very excited, you know, hosting lots of events. I, I was a little disappointed, though, that so many of them uh, said that they weren't planning to vote because I'm they... Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Uh, how is that not hearsay? Your Honor, the statements elicited are, are that some of the voters were not planning on voting for Ms. Ginger because there was so much support for her already. <coughs> Pursuant to Midland's Rules of Evidence 8033, this is a, the Declan's then existing state of mind, including motive, intent, or plan. Response? Your Honor, 8033, the statement elicited by Ms. Midori is people were not planning to vote. 8033 uh, talks about the plan but not a lack of plan. And secondly, these are out of court statements being offered to prove the truth of the matter it asserts. The statement is people said they were not going to vote and they're trying to prove that people were not going to vote. Really? May I have heard John? Yeah. Uh, it says that motive, intent, or plan. <coughs> these voters' plan was that they were not going to go to the election polls on election day. Right, the decision I'll respond to, respond to that part of it. Yes, Your Honor. Um, 8033 talks about a plan, not a lack of plan, Your Honor. So they can say what they were going to do or planning to do, but not what they were planning not to do, Your Honor. Overall. So, Ms. Vittori, what were these voters saying before election day? Uh, they were saying that, you know, they weren't planning to vote since there was just uh, so much excitement. And, uh, you know, I, I told them that that was uh, not the best idea. Well, you mentioned that there was some support for Ms. Ginger. Was there any support for Ms. Heisman? Oh, sure. You know, there were lots of rallies, events, lots of yard signs. It was very encouraging. Oh, Ms. Medoya, where was the polling center held in District 12? Uh, it was over at the Slolo Gym this year. Um, when did you learn about that? Uh, I learned on February 18th, I believe. Were you able to let the voters of District 12 know where they were able to vote on Election Day? I sure was. I worked very closely with the Midlands Election Commission to get the word out. Uh, I did some spots on the radio, which was my favorite part. And we also sent flyers to every registered voter in District 12, and we posted signs up in some public places around town. So let's talk about Election Day then. How did that day start out for you? Well, Election Day is my favorite day of the year, besides of Independence Day, of course. And so uh, I, my day started, the polls <laughs> opened at 7 a.m. So naturally, I arrived at 3 a.m. to start getting things ready. And uh, at 5 a.m., the polling machines were delivered. How many polling machines were delivered to you? 
Well, there are supposed to be five typically. I like to call them Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe after our great leaders. Uh, but this year, Madison and Monroe were missing. Well, how did Madison and Monroe being missing affect election day? You know, it, it was very stressful. We had time to adjust when the, uh, the polling location changed. We had time to get the word out, you know. but. Uh, we just learned about this lack of machines the morning of, so it, it was very stressful. You know, the lines seemed very long that day. Now, what else happened for you on Election Day? Well, you know, a big part of my job is, you know, going around answering questions. It's very exciting, you know, to talk to the voters. And uh, so throughout the day, you know, I'll go and talk to people. And, you know, some people just ask the basics, like where to stand or who the candidates are. We also get some of those uh, trickier questions, so that those would pertain to things like voter eligibility. On election day, did any voters ask about voter eligibility? Uh, yes, a couple people did, and uh, you know, I would clear up any confusion. And typically, if someone was able to vote, I would let them know that, and uh, then they get right back in line. Do questions? T do voters typically ask questions like this? Oh, sure, every year. And did you turn anyone away after they asked you questions about voter eligibility? No, not if they were eligible to vote. What else did you do throughout the day, Ms. Majori? Well, unfortunately, we were short a security guard, but I'm not opposed to a challenge. And fortunately, I took a course on private security online once, so uh, I decided to canvass during our busiest hours. What times did you canvass? Uh, I went outside to, you know, check for any suspicious activity at 9 a.m., noon, and 5 p.m. And where exactly did you canvass? I went around every surrounding side street in the area. And did you see any suspicious activity during any of these times? <clears throat> oh, no. I, I never would have tolerated that on my watch. Uh, permission to approach the witness with place of uh, two and three, the flyer and the photo of Yep. Ms. Bedore, I first want to start by talking about that photo of the man that I've just handed you. All right, now. When you canvassed every street in the neighborhood at 9 a.m., did you ever see that man? No. When you canvassed every street at noon, did you ever see that man? No. And when you canvassed every single street at 5 p.m., did you ever see that man? I had not seen this man before at all, no. Did any of the voters report seeing this man to you? No. Did any of your staffers ever report seeing this man to you? No. Now, second, I want to talk about that flyer that I've just handed to you. All right, now. Ms. Majoria, when you canvass every single street at 9 a.m., did you ever see any of those flyers? Uh, no. When you canvass every single street at noon, did you ever see any of those flyers? No. And when you canvass every single street at 5 p.m., did you ever see any of those flyers? No, I, I've, I only saw this flyer once. So, Ms. Majority, how did the day end? What time did the polls close? Well, so the polls closed at 7 p.m., but unfortunately, because of the lines, we still had a couple stragglers. Uh, so, you know, we let everybody who was in line by 7 stay behind, and just, you know, everybody who was there was able to vote. How did the day end for you, Ms. Well, you know, it, it was a very long day, but I was proud of the work that I had done to serve America. Thank you, Ms. Medoy. No further questions. Permission to approach and retreat documents? Yes, please. <coughs>